Hi there. Welcome to my first attempt at attempting to run a problem solving session um, on YouTube. Uh, we'll see how it goes when I get back. Okay, so we're going to try to build upon the concepts we were working on Friday in class. Uh, here's a sample problem where we're working in a lab where we have a, a nitrogen gas laser. Uh, this particular laser emits light in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum, specifically at 337 nanometers. In order to protect our eyes, we're going to coat our glasses with a thin film of oil. Uh, we know the index is a refraction of both the oil and our glasses, and due to physical constraints of our thin film applicator, we can't spray a film less than 300 nanometers thick. The question is, what is the thinnest film we can apply of oil on our glasses to protect our eyes? Okay, so this is a thin film reflection problem. Our goal is to find a thickness of film that will totally reflect all the light to protect our eyes from that, that ultraviolet laser. Um, the first thing we're going to do, as we do in all physics problems, is we're going to draw a picture. In this case, our picture is going to consist of a thin film of oil sprayed upon glass and of course the laser is going to start out in the air so what we do is we look at the path that the laser beam was taking on the way in uh, we remember that light behaves as a wave so here is so first thing we're going to draw is our incoming wave now this wave is going to hit the interface between air and oil and when it hits that oil layer it's going to be partially reflected and partially transmitted so we need to draw both the reflected and transmitted wave now something else important is that we recognize what the index is a refraction of all these various media are. Remember that the index refraction of air is 1, roughly, really close to 1. Uh, the oil in this case has an index refraction of 1.55 and the glass has an index refraction of 1.32. Now the reason why this is important is remember that whenever a wave goes from an index of refraction that's low to one that's higher, we end up getting a a phase shift of pi, or in other words, an inversion of the reflected wave. So in this case, the reflected wave from that first boundary is going to look like this. I'm going to label this reflected wave 1. And when we look at the incoming wave, the incoming wave was starting in the negative and going up towards the positive, the reflected wave doesn't continue in the positive because of the phase shift. Instead, it's um, inverted as shown. Uh, the next step is to look at reflected wave 2. Um, what's happening in this case is that the wave be penetrates the oil and, you know, I don't know if I want this oil to be one half a wavelength thick or a quarter of a wavelength thick. So I'm just going to randomly choose a half a wavelength and, and see what happens. See if I get total reflection or maybe total transmittance. Um, so our incoming wave penetrated the oil. It got to the oil glass boundary. And notice that glass has a lower index of refraction than oil, so we don't get a phase shift. We don't get a, a um, an inversion like we did at the first interface. And so that means that the light continues to go this direction and then exits the glass like this. So I didn't draw it very neatly, I'm sorry still learning how to draw on the screen. So reflected wave 2 is going to look like this, and notice that if you add reflected wave 1 and reflected wave 2, they actually cancel out. So that means that they 
they um, they superimpose destructively, and in this case, this means that we have 100% transmission, which means that we've just burned our eye out with our ultraviolet laser beam. And we know that physics is all fun and games till you burn your eye out. So that means that whenever we have one half of a wavelength, I'm going to put a little prime there for a reason that I'll explain pretty soon, equal to the length or the thickness of the film in this case, we're going to get 100% transmission. Um, so we don't want our film to be a half a wavelength thick. So I'm going to go to the next possible scenario where in this case the way the film is going to be a quarter of a wavelength thick. So again we're going to say it's got a thickness of L. We're going to have an incoming wave, a reflected wave 1, and a reflected wave 2. We're going to draw the incoming wave. This time we are only going to allow, okay whatever you do don't hit that button, um, we're only going to make the thickness one quarter of a wavelength. Let's remember what our indexes of refraction are. Up here we had an index refraction of one. Here it was one point, now let's go see, 1.55 and over here it was 1.32. Um, this time we've made the thickness only a quarter of a wavelength big. I'm actually going to draw that quarter down in reflected wave um, 2. The first reflected wave again suffers a phase shift so it comes out like this. The second wave is going to go into the medium but then it's going to bounce back without a phase shift and then it's going to exit like this. So this is our incoming wave. This is our reflected wave number one. And down here we have reflected wave number two. And notice that this time the, in, the reflected wave 1 and 2 add constructively. So that means that we have maximum reflection and our eyes are protected. So we have maximum reflection if the thickness of the thin film is one quarter of a wavelength. Now I'm putting a prime here next to the wavelength because we have to remember that we need to use the wavelength of the light in the thin film which is going to be less than the wavelength of the light inside um, in air. Uh, I'll finish solving this problem in part two.